right, we should be live with some yawn on the Celestial Elephants now. Uh, we're just going to get started right away. We, there was three donation incentives for this, and all three of them were met, which is why I'm currently wearing this strange kind of elephant hat. I don't know why it's got a cone shape for the trunk, but I don't know. It was like $15. It was worth it. Um, so we'll be showing off a little bit of a glitch exhibition at the end of the run, as well as we'll be changing Yano's outfit at the very beginning. So we'll be starting in five, four, three, two, one. All right. So at the very beginning, after we get through this little dialogue, we will put on the Lynx tunic and we will continue on from there. Uh, normally you have to buy the, um, Normally you have to buy the tunic, but we're just going to do some magic behind the scenes. And suddenly we are going to have uh, a tunic on. I did it right. Amazing. How does he do it? I don't know. Magic. All right. So now we have our Lynx tunic on. We can continue during the tutorial. Uh, the tutorial mainly is us trying to avoid having conversations with the main character here. That's supposed to explain how to play and all that, but you can do all these dashes and uh, cutting across these gaps to skip it. You're supposed to blow on that pinwheel there, but you can dash across the gap here to avoid it. Whenever there's gaps or edges you can go across, when you dash across them, Yana gets a bunch of speed, so we are able to take advantage of that and skip a, a decent part of the tutorial. This is the only puzzle we really have to do during the tutorial, uh, but this is going to take us to Windhill here, uh, and once we get here we'll be doing first big skip of the run, which is called Monk Skip. There is a monk you're supposed to um, splash with water to wake them up, and there's a big dialogue afterwards, but instead you can use this chicken to boost here. There's an invisible wall you need to get around, but as you fall off the edge there you can dash and it gets you around it and skips the conversation that's there. Uh, so we're just going to wiggle along the edge here which skips having to put out those fires and fight those enemies. And now we're in Hedgehog Forest. So during this section, we're gonna fight these snakes here. And the main reason to do that is once you fight all these, you get a key and that key lets us normally go through this door that's right here where this key lock is. But instead you can just go the opposite direction. Uh, and we can use this pot that's here and it's going to get us to the same room, but not use the key. A big thing in this game is sequence breaking keys out from where they're supposed to be. So now we have a key in a room that we're not supposed to have it in. Um, we could just leave right now. We could just use the key here and leave. But what we want to do is we want to grab the key that's normally in here and take it with us because it's going to allow us to do some skips and skip the final puzzle of this area, which is very long. Um, this room we're in has a couple big cycles to it. That uh, water wheel that we just uh, blew the pinwheel on and then that platform we just activated. We have to walk our way over there onto the platform, but when we um, get this water upgrade that we have, we move a lot slower. So that goes pretty hard to hit, um, unless you do a glitch where you dash during that cutscene, it lets you move during it. It's like a small, it lets you move for like a, a extra second, but it's really important for that part. So now we have a key we're not supposed to have, we can do some weird things with it. Um, keys are kind of structured like ramps, so you can use them to boost up places you're not supposed to go to. Like uh, up there, you're supposed to go in like a circle around this room, but instead you can just cut through the circle and just go to the very end. And we still have the key with us because you can grab items that are far below you uh, and still grab them, but things that are above you, you can't really grab. So we do need to be careful to uh, not fall in the water here because we will lose the key. We'll have to redo the beginning portion of uh, Hedgehog Forest. So, there actually is supposed to be a key in this room normally on that rock, but if you enter a room with a key um, and then the room itself is supposed to have a key in it, it actually won't spawn the second key. You have to leave um, and come back. So, we're going to end this part of Hedgehog Forest. This is the final puzzle that takes a decent while to do. Uh, so we're just going to put the key into here and leave instead of doing the puzzle like normal. Because one of the unfortunate things, you can't bring keys out of the area they're supposed to be in. 
So if you're in Hedgehog Forest, you can't bring a key from Hedgehog Forest into this next city hub, which is uh, Nightingale City. Uh, so you can't do, you can't grab a key from one area and bring it to the other and do some some really crazy skips because the game will just take your key away. Uh, so we're gonna cut through here. So this is actually kind of a unique place because this is where you kind of come through here the first time, but you actually end the game here. We're gonna make a save here, which will be important later on. But for now, just know that this is where you're supposed to end the game. You're actually supposed to go up there and talk with the queen. But instead of doing that, we can actually avoid these guards here. They're supposed to tell you to talk with the queen by just uh, dashing onto their head and skipping them. Uh, and then we're just going to go up here. And there's another conversation you're supposed to have with the, the one lady from the beginning of the game. But instead, we're going to use this chicken and go on this little half slab here and skip talking with her as well. Unfortunately, that's the last time we use a chicken to do a skip in this run. But we gotta do a couple skips with it, so it's worthwhile. Uh, we're doing another key boost here, but it's really hard to do because it's on this ramp, so you have to kind of set up a dash and boost yourself up a little bit. It's much easier to do key boost when it's on a, a very flat surface. This is probably the most dangerous part of the run in terms of uh, health-wise. If we die, we have to redo this entire troll moss section. So to avoid all these traps, you also want to dash at the right time so the traps don't back boost you and keep hitting you over and over again. Just like here, what we're going to do is we're going to keep dashing. If we dash at the right time, it won't back boost us. And actually, if you dash at just the right time, it won't even do damage to you. So you have to be kind of careful to time those. So dashing to avoid damage is a little bit harder and somewhat more random. So that dash right there is completely random, and sometimes it takes like 10 tries. That time, because of marathon luck, I took one try, so we're gonna keep going. You're supposed to fill this buckle up, uh, buckle, this bucket up, but uh, instead of filling it up with water, we can just stick Yano's head inside of it, and the game checks once to see if there's something inside of the bucket to weigh it down, and it says, oh, Yano's head, that counts. And that's pretty much it. So there's just a floating bucket there now, uh, powering that pressure plate. So this is the reason why our health is really important, is because we have this little fighting section here. We're actually going to take this pretty safe. We're just going to stick our head into here. And the reason we're staying over here is there's an enemy right outside of where the camera is. And if you fight them both at once, there's a very good chance they'll just kind of gang up on you and uh, you'll end up taking some damage. And you're supposed to get these little tokens that let you improve your health. Um, but since that takes time, uh, we don't do that. So we just end up having four hearts the entire run. It is not the best, but it's all right. But really troll moss is the only point in the run where it's really important to, to manage your health. We're gonna bait this guy to swing a couple times and miss. Uh, and while we're doing that, we can push the skull into the corner there and skip back to use two keys there. I actually don't know where the two keys are. This is Thunder Garden. Um, there's a big crypt section where you do a bunch of light puzzles and you're supposed to help a bunch of people up here. And there's a big like skeleton boss thing that you're supposed to fight. And there's all, lots of cool stuff. Um, and once you do all of that, this gate opens. It's over here. I actually have no clue where the skull went. There it is. Um, but the gate's supposed to open afterwards. What you can do instead is push the skull into these flowers and skip pretty much all of that in the uh what is basically 100 percent category of the run it takes like 15 or 20 minutes to get through that area so uh we that skip through it we're gonna do something pretty similarly large this is called no major skips by the way <laughs> after we just skip the uh, entire area after only seeing one uh one level of it uh so acorn woods leads to a robot uh city hub that you have to do a bunch of puzzles for and also fight a boss um, and then you're supposed to come back here and go to Woolly Mountain, which is over here, and the gate will be done. But the game gives us a key, which is obviously a terrible mistake, so we just use the key to get over there. You're supposed to melt that snowman, but that's kind of like mean, so we're not going to do that. Instead, we... Uh, sorry, my brain just melted for a second, trying to figure out how to do this very complicated push block into corner puzzle. Uh, but now we have the chili pepper, which lets us melt things. You're supposed to melt that snowman there. But you can melt this block in this corner, and for some reason it gives you a little boost. The thing that was inside that ice block is the those health tokens that give you extra health. 
Uh, but you have to trade them in to get more health slots, which we just don't end up doing. So just still here with without it. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of parkour here, as well as uh, Yano can do really, and get the key from here. Unfortunately, nobody ever taught Yano how keys work, so we're just gonna throw the key onto the the key lock instead. Uh, you're supposed to use that chili pepper to melt the snowman. But when you get near the chili pepper, it spawns a bunch of enemies. So if you just go in a small circle around it, just none of the enemies spawn. And you can clip through that bush. Oh, we don't need this anymore. We're just going to throw it. <laughs> you actually don't need that key anymore because there's just more There's more simple ways of skipping things. Like you're supposed to get a key from that guy, but you can use this pot to get around him. Um, and similarly with this, you're supposed to... I actually don't even know what you're supposed to do here. Um, you just can kind of boost yourself up that little half slab there and skip the entire puzzle by boosting your way up. So to get across this gap, instead of doing the puzzle, you have to dash right as you fall off that edge. Pretty much uh, the game gives you a little bit of coyote time where you can dash while you're falling off. And you have to dash right as you, you end up falling off that edge and then also redirect yourself to get through here. Uh, the queen puts us in her dungeon, uh, presumably because she's upset because we ignored her at the beginning of the game. Uh, but unfortunately her dungeon is very easy to break out from because they gave us peanuts and then the way to trigger the way out. But being in prison is great because the guards here don't disappear when you knock them out. You can use them like little stepping stools. Uh, you can use it to get up here and then use the key to get onto the out of bounds seam and then take the key with you. It's great. The best part of the run. Okay, so we had the glitch happen where... Um, oh, nice. <laughs> so, unfortunately, we had the glitch happen where when you enter that dialogue, um, the dialogue just ends itself, and then Yano freezes in place and can't do anything. Uh, unfortunately, when that happens, you have to redo Queen's Dungeon, so if you missed the part where we stepped on the guy and got onto the out of bounds scene, we can do it again. I did have it in practice where this happened two times in a row. Uh, which has never happened before. So, I mean, hey, this is a marathon, so it could probably happen again. Who knows? We're going to be very gentle, and we're going to very gently go down here. Cool. We're great. Nothing bad happened. This is what's supposed to happen. They're supposed to actually attack you, but instead they just stood there and stared at us. So just like before with uh, Hedgehog Forest, we're going to keep sequence breaking keys out of here, so we're not supposed to have a key leaving this room. There's actually supposed to be a key in that little jail cell that's there. But, um, because we have a key with us, it doesn't spawn the key there, just like it did earlier. So we're gonna have to leave and come back. I'll do this cool dash right there. I didn't mention it before, but there's double dashing in this game. When you, um, enter a load zone... Whoops. Okay, I guess he gets the key. Uh, when you enter a load zone, uh, once you exit it, there's a small amount of time you can input two dashes. Usually dashing is the exact same speed as walking but that's just because there's a little slowdown after you dash. Um, when you dash going out of a load zone, you don't have those little slowdowns, so it's kind of like a small optimization, and it look, kind of look cool. So when I do stuff like that. Um, so we're going to go into the void now, because um, we, we spent so much time in the normal plane of existence. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into this corner over here, and we're going to get so much momentum that we keep going too far up above the top of the ceiling. The game keeps trying to place us down, but we keep our momentum. We keep flying up and up and up and sideways. And the game keeps trying to put us down, and eventually it puts us down right in front of the gate, and it places us there and lets us pretty much just get through there without uh, too much difficulty, <laughs> uh, just by launching ourselves. So we're going to do a small little key boost there and get ourselves up the ramp instead of doing the push block puzzle. Hey. Like before, we're, since the guard doesn't go away when you knock him out, we're just going to knock him out in this corner and use him to get up here. You have to be careful not to let that guard get too far in the corner because they'll actually uh, get stuck on the ceiling because he'll he launches up when he dies and he just won't come back down. <laughs> um, this next skip is a little weird. So we're going to position this guard into this corner, but not too far in the corner. And we're going to twist, and that's going to kind of jam us between all this scenery right here. 
Um, sometimes you have to reposition. There we go. And it boosts you up over that gate instead of doing the puzzle. Um, you can wedge yourself in between there. There's just so many things happening, my goodness. You can wedge yourself in between there, and it boosts you up, and you can access that chest early. Okay, so we have our one last big platforming physics skip before uh, we get to the, the final final skip of the run. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to get ourselves onto this tub of water and we're going to clip inside of it and it's going to launch us. But you have to go to a very precise place. Like legitimately, this is very, very, very precise. You actually, this is the only part of the run where you use your keyboard to set it up. It should be right. There you go. And it boosts you straight over the gate and you don't have to do like a minute long puzzle section. So that saves you a decent bit of time. Um, I won't even explain why that box can go inside that fence because I need to explain the load warp we're about to do. Um, the load warp, so you remember that save we made a while ago? So what we're going to do is we're going to start the boss cutscene and then we're going to load that save because that save is where you're supposed to go to after the boss fight ends. Um, and after the boss fight ends it spawns an NPC. So we've basically tricked the game into thinking that we've started the boss fight and the boss has, um, we've already beaten the boss because the only way to get out of the boss's area once you've started the boss fight cutscene is to kill him. So the boss, the game assumes that we've fought the boss, so it spawns the NPC. And when you talk to the NPC, it spawns the portal to the end of the game. So, long and short of it, we load warp out of the boss's arena to skip fighting him. So we just skip all the bosses uh, in the entire game. So we're actually here at the end of the run. I will be showing off the mini Yano glitch here, but if you are interested in learning how to run this game, uh, we do have a lot of resources uh, in our Discord on the speedrun.com page for Yano. It's just a fun game in general, so if you enjoyed this, definitely look out for that. But timing will be once all the dialogue boxes go down, so it'll be in a few seconds here. And time. Don't ask why Yano just jumped off the platform at the end. You're not supposed to be able to move during it, but you can dash into the platform and just fall if you want to. All right, cool. So we will be showing off the mini Yano glitch in just a second here, once we get done with the uh, credits, which are pretty short. Pretty much everything was made by the one, one dev team. Um, the dev is actually on the speedrunning discord as well, so we'll, we'll show them the funny things we find and it'll just they'll get a kick out of it, so good times. All right, uh, should be one more screen and then we can show off the mini Yona glitch that you guys were very generous enough to donate for. We will go back to where we just were, make a save. All right, so one important thing to understand is during this cutscene, uh, you actually are not getting further away from the camera like it looks like. You're actually, the platform is shrinking and moving to the left, and so is Yano. And normally it doesn't matter because the game ends anyway, so the fact that your your person is shrinking over and over again, or an elephant rather, doesn't really matter. Um, but you can dash onto the platform and move off of it. So it tricks the game into thinking that you or it, you die when you're not supposed to be able to so you're able to maintain the small size so you actually see we're, we're a little bit smaller now but we can do better than that we can stack the glitch over and over again so we'll do this like three times uh, just to show how tiny yano can get yano can you can keep stacking this over and over again to a point where you can barely even see yano but for the the sake of brevity and not having the marathon go behind after being so ahead uh <laughs> you can see Yano's a little tinier than he was before. So we'll do it one more time. And the funny thing about this is that during this, Yano's hitbox is actually changing as well. Like, it's not just a visual change. Like, Yano's actually this small now. Um, so, dash onto there. So again, we can move. One more time, then we'll just run around the area and show off that you are very, very tiny now. Yeah, this is all just because you can dash off the platform and, and die right as the cutscene starts. Alright, and then right as it pans over, we'll do it one more time. There we go. 
Now we are officially Miniano. All right, so. We will walk back through here and just see we are... I think you can sneak under here. No, you can't. Okay, that's actually solid. But yeah, you can just walk around here. Walk around a little bit and then let you guys go. You can pick up things that are twice your size now because you're a little super strength like usual. Um, yeah, you can just sneak between guards and go places you're not meant to go and yeah, just go underneath this bench, sneak into here, get stuck on things. You can just weasel into a bunch of places you're not meant to go. It was a lot of fun. Unfortunately, this only happens at the end of the game, so you can't use this uh, to actually skip stuff or, or do anything really crazy. Um, you It doesn't maintain a new save file as well, so you can't even do like mini Yano percent runs, which is really tragic. Um, but either way, thank you guys. I won't uh, sit here and run around as a tiny elephant for, for the entire rest of the marathon, but thank you guys so much for having me along. There will be lots of wonderful runs. I think unfortunately the Mushroom 11 is not going to be the next run. It might be. For now it is. For now it is. We will oh, see how is. that goes. Mushroom 11 is great. Definitely stick around for that.